So why don't we go ahead and call this meeting to order. I two things. Yes, we must start that over again. It's 5.01, yeah. so we'll go ahead and start this meeting. We call this meeting to order. I'm going to welcome uh, everyone to the special oh, uh, tourism sure. borders in the county uh, board meeting today. Um, we'll start off with a review and modification and approval of the agenda. Uh, uh, our agenda today will be as follows. Uh, we'll start with public comments, following which we will discuss the interim director need. Uh, after that discussion, we will move to staffing, and we'll discuss bylaws. Then we have uh, a discussion on the boat docks. And we need to make a decision on, as well as sponsorship requests. And following that, then we will adjourn. Is there any modifications that need to be made to this agenda before we proceed today? I don't think we can because it's a special called meeting, correct? That's right. We cannot make one. Then we'll accept as is. All right, very good. Then um, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Very good. <laughs> Uh, first item on uh, the agenda then will be public comments, and our first uh, person to present will be John Hurd. And your name, I will need your address, yep. just your street address. So my business address is 232 Airport Road, and my home address is 410 Cummings Lane. Okay. But I own Second Gen Graveyard, which is a specialty auto parts store down on Airport Road, and I specialize in... Uh, 1970, 1981 Firebirds and Trans Ams. And I don't know if you all saw the bandit run when we hosted it here last year. We had 160 cars in town. All of our participants stayed at local hotels, ate at local restaurants, and each day we went out and did a different event. That bandit run event moves around the country every year, and this year it'll be in Michigan, so I'm going to Michigan next week for that. But we had so many positive comments from hosting that event here that people kept saying, when's it going to be, when's it going to be, when's it going to be, and so my wife and I decided we're going to do the event here and start it up as an annual every year event locally for Tennessee. And so the reason why I put in a, a submission for a request for some funding is A, to help us do it, B, to get it on your radar so you're aware of what we're doing. Right now we have about 40 cars signed up, we're hoping to get up in the close to, to 80 to 100. So that means 40 people are going to be coming to town, staying at the, the Hampton Inn is going to be our um, host hotel, and then eating at the restaurants and seeing our great location in Tennessee. Um, so I wanted to come by today just to introduce myself and answer any questions you might have. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it ahead of time. I know I'm going out of order on your, uh, your agenda, but just kind of introduce yourself and tell what I'm doing. We will have a bunch of cars coming into town. Each day we'll be doing a different event. Thursday night is the check-in. Everybody will come check in, get their goodie bags, and we're going to have dinner at Fairview Pizza, and so we'll be spending the money there. Friday morning, we're going to go out to Loveless Cafe, uh, meet up for breakfast, and then we're going to go down the Notches Trace, which we all know is the most beautiful roadway in Tennessee. Um, we'll go to a, a, another, another shop that my buddy owns for lunch, and then we'll come back to town, and we'll be in Hendersonville for the cruise-in, and then back to the hotel for a social hour. Saturday morning, we're going to get up in the morning and head out to Clarksville, where we have the drag strip uh, rented for three hours. Everybody will get on the drag strip, do some passes. And then we come back to the fun part, which is downtown Gallatin. It's going to close off the roadway for us. Fingers are crossed. I got my permit, but I'm going to go to that meeting, too, in a few minutes. Um, we'll close the roadway. We'll park all of the cars down there, um, and everybody will socialize and go to the restaurants. And then the Palace Theater is going to show us the movie Smokey and the Bandit for us. So we'll find out, <laughs> eat popcorn, watch the movie together. Um, and then Sunday Sounds morning, probably my favorite part is the Sumner County Sheriff's Department, Gallatin PD, Gallatin Fire Department, can put on a pancake breakfast uh, with our cars as a car show, and, and uh, so we do that as a fundraiser. And then we leave at 10.30 and we go for a tour of Sumner County, which is all the way out uh, to Westmoreland and then around to Portland and back. And that was, we did that last year, we did it on a Tuesday evening, and all of our participants were amazed at Sumner County and the, the, the show up that we had for it. We advertised it pretty heavily on social media. We had probably a thousand people on the side of the road waving us on, and there wasn't a from here to the front door that there wasn't a, somebody on the side of the road doing it. So when that event was over, people kept coming back to us, to my wife and I, and saying, "This is a beautiful town. Who's your realtor? We loved it here. We're thinking about coming here." It was just really amazing that they got to see our town and, and see what it's all about. 
So really our passion is for the cars, our passion is for the local area and bringing people to town. We want to grow this event. And so we're asking for a couple of dollars to help us out to do that. Um, obviously we would uh, promote Sumner County tourism. Uh, we have an event t-shirt where the, the logos will be on the back so we can do Sumner County tourism on the back. We'll have a big banner at the hotel, a banner at my shop where we would put your logo on there. And then obviously in all of our uh, social media advertising sponsored by, so we'd be able to put that out there as well. Uh, this nice young lady, and I apologize, I can't remember your name, gave us a big box of the brochures. So one brochure from Sumner County will go in everybody's goodie bag, so everybody that participates will get that. And we're open to any other suggestions on ways to promote our local area to the people that are coming out here. So I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I just want to put a face with the name so when you're looking at the, at the, at the request, you'll know what it's all about kind of what our passion is. Oh, probably the most important part. Every cent we raise goes to the Gallatin Police Department Shop for the Cop program. Uh, this, I'm, I'm a for-profit business. This is, a, this is an event that is near and dear to me, and I'm not trying to make any money off of it. I was in law enforcement for 25 years. I started that program at our agency in California. I know how good it is, how important it is. And when we moved out here four years ago, I reached out to the police department to see if they did it, and they said they did. I've been raising money for them ever since, and we've raised probably about $8,000 for the program through things we've done in my shop. This is just another way to do it. So that's that's really the benefit of, of what we're doing. All the funds go there. So know that anything that you donate is really going to trickle right back into the police department shop of the cop program to help, help offset our funds so that we make more money to donate. Happy to answer any questions you have. I really appreciate your time. I have a question. Do you have other sponsors? Do I have yeah, other sponsors? sponsors? Yeah, I have a variety of, of businesses that I work with that, that I sell part, parts for. Full case radiators, pipes, exhaust, Year One, Performance, Legendary Interiors, and they're they're jumping in at sponsorship levels of two fifty to five hundred dollars. So that's helping as well. Okay. And, and I asked for a thousand. I don't know if that's a lot for you guys. I don't know if it's a little. Um, I'm happy to take more. I will take less. <laughs> I'll take whatever you guys you guys want to participate with. And, and you know, we appreciate it. It's all it's all for an awesome cause, and it brings a whole bunch of people to our city. And the, the enthusiasm we had from all of our participants last year really drove us to do this. And the fact that. The hotel folks said, John, when are you doing it again? The restaurant said, John, when are you doing it again? The, the boutiques downtown were asking my wife, when are you doing it again? And for two or three weeks after the event, people were coming in my shop going, I don't own a car, but man, you guys had a great event. When are you doing it again? So that's what we're going to try now. Any other questions you. I can ask for you? All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me crash your meeting. Sure. <laughs> okay. So I signed up. Uh, Terry Boyd. I live at 334 Fanta Circle. Uh, I wanted to uh, come by and tell you, I, I know this is a special call, you can't talk about it, but at budget, your budget was uh, reduced from what you asked, and I wanted to let you know that Monday we're having another budget meeting. You do have an opportunity to come and speak in public comments and say whatever you might want to say about that, and I just wanted to extend that to your committee here to let you know. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. David, Andy Gilly is here with Hendersonville Parks too to talk about Pig Fest. I didn't know if you wanted to let me go or go back to the agenda. Do you have to go somewhere? Um, uh, about 6.30. What's up, Jim? Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, ship, we'll get you in sponsorships. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, are there any other public comments that we need to address? Okay. And uh, we will move to the next agenda item, which is an interim director. So, uh, as you know, um, we, the executive director position is vacant at this time. We received some resumes and uh, need to go through the interview process. In the meantime, there, uh, Mason has also resigned, and so we're essentially down to one employee, so, uh, hey, which Maddie. is Maddie, <laughs> so welcome. Uh, and she's going to need some support uh, in the meantime until such time as we're able to get an executive director position filled. So in the, in the meantime, 
we're proposing that we put an interim director in place uh, for a 90 day period to uh, get Maddie the support she needs while we make a final decision on uh, the executive director. Second. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. All right, very good. Sorry. Just waiting for you to make the motion. Yeah. Very good. So we have several applicants um, that uh, have have applied for the role. None of them have been interviewed to date because we have not. This is we haven't been able to get a quorum at a board meeting. So it's the first time we've had quorum. Uh, over the last two sessions, so we haven't been able to do, to discuss them or do any interviews. So we um, have some candidates in there that uh, have have experience, and others that don't necessarily have the experience we're looking for. Uh, in the in the meantime, from an interim director standpoint, I think of the candidates that we have received uh, resumes for. Um, there is a candidate named Mark Petros that is, uh, he does not live in Sumner County, he lives in Red Boiling Springs, but he has a significant amount of experience in the hospitality and tourism uh, area. He has a bachelor's degree. In, 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 do, do you all have his resume? Yep. Yeah, right you. now. <clears throat> yep. Most of his experience seems to be hotel. Uh, yep. So he, little of anything else. Other anything else. Okay. So yes, he does have a uh, background in hotel, but he's also an adjunct faculty member who instructs hotel and restaurant management at Lake Tahoe Community College. He is a virtual instructor there. Um, he also has a background in finance, and he has a degree in business management. For an, for an interim position. But essentially what the interim, oh yeah, go ahead. Well, I, considering the issue we have had last week with signatures, and I don't, I did not ask Mary if she has been to the bank to I do that. I the bank today, I've not heard back from them yet. Mm -hmm. Because her husband, well they were out of town last week and out of state and her husband had to go to the hospital last night via an ambulance for heart and chest pains. And I just know she's still in the hospital with him and I have not inquired further. Yep. But I feel like with Mason leaving and Kelly with your last day being the 18th and Maddie going on vacation on the 14th, having the having someone with business experience whether it's in if, if Maddie's going to stay there then that will help with the, the co she's in sales and marketing sales, sales. And events. yes that I just I feel like we are just at a place where we just have to have someone in the office full-time with her and I also have you know I don't want her there by herself so, and I'm sorry. There's one. Yeah. I just realized that there's one resume that's not in that pile, in that pile because I sent it to you under separate cover, mm -hmm. and I just copied those directly off the email that you sent me. Okay. Um, Who's that? Okay. Wait a minute. So I think the other the other thing to consider is interim position is 90 days. So I'm. Pretty sure that none of the other candidates are interested in quitting their job. For That's days. what I was getting ready to ask. Is yeah. are these other <laughs> candidates aware that this is a short term? Right. Uh, the, well, the right. other candidates have applied for the executive. They've all they've yes. all applied for the director position. Right. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So. So that does. Yeah. And <laughs> we whittle it down a bit. Mm -hmm. who might consider to. For so, oh. The ninety days. Aaron. Or Eric J. Janet. 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 Yes, and he does have similar experience. Yeah. 
And didn't we get did a we? resume from Linda Evgen? I did. I thought I sent that to y'all, but I don't know that you she did. was looking for the full time. I don't think she was looking for I've, the interview. When I, I talked to her about the time she said maybe before she didn't write a, write a resume, but she said the interim would be okay. Okay. All right, so then I guess let's have this. So, we, so far, we have three potential people for interim directors. So, let's talk about each of them. I haven't, I have not seen the resume for the person you just talked about. So, if you want to give me some background, that would be helpful. Did you send Kelly? You said you sent the other resume. I sent it to Dave because it was missing oh, okay. from his original correspondence to me. Yeah. So, I guess I the question is, would Wade Evans be interested in quitting his job for ninety days to? to fill an interim role that he may or may not get hired on to permanently. I can't speak for Ray Evans. Correct. So okay. Yeah, well, we did he? Yeah. Well, he's multiple. Okay. okay. Either way, Wade Evans applied for an executive director role. So we have, we have, I guess I don't know the best way to go about it. Do we just consider every single one of these people and just pick one and cross our fingers that they're going to, going to say yes if we offer them the interim role? I mean, a couple of them are, or at least one doesn't even live in the area, so right, that would right, be, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be yeah. that would be a stretch. That's a huge, that's a huge uh, uh -huh. hurdle to jump there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, this is not like whoever we put place as interim director. That does not a guarantee that they're going to receive the news, that they're going to be the one that interviews and is selected for the executive yeah, director. Yeah, one of the New Orleans, I doubt it. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I'm right. Yeah, I'm it's just very interesting, but. Yeah. <laughs> I'm under the understanding that these people are interested in the job, the director's correct. job. Not, that's correct. Not, not an interim, interim position. Yeah, but yeah. No, none of these people, in fact, are even aware there is an interim director role available because we so have no a broadcast is, of interim I, director role. Is no one aware that there's an interim position available then? None of the candidates. Well, some of them are, because I know I've talked to Linda Evgen, and she's aware that there's a it's an interim position available. Do you have that? Resume? I don't have it with me. She's worked in, she was the chairman of Holiday Fest. She is chair of a Holiday Fest. She's chairman of Holiday Fest. She's been involved with women in film. She's, a, she's been an mm -hmm. actress and been involved in uh, a lot of theater type of productions and things. She's got a very wide... Uh, uh, she's got a, a lot of people in, in Nashville that's in the in the theater community that she's uh, movie, movie and TV and music communities that she's very involved in that. I has, I'm going to ask this question: Has she been a beneficiary of any sponsorships from Sumner County Tourism Board in the past? Because that's a conflict of interest and Holiday that, Fest. That I don't would think be a has. legitimate concern. Some of the organizations involved in Holiday Fest might have, but she's but the, but she does not oversee those. She just oversees the, the umbrella. Organization. Um, Y'all remember anything from? To be honest, I can't. I mean, it goes back a long way. I can't pig fest. Don't they run the pig fest? Is it pig fest? But that's not run by Holiday Fest. That's just a, just that's just an umbrella. Then has, what has Holiday Fest received sponsorship money from Sumner County Tourism in the past? I can't tell you if they specifically have. Okay. I can't remember. remember. Does Sorry. anyone know what? Sponsorships, Holiday Fest also supports. They support a lot of nonprofit groups that hold events, and then they help disperse the money. I believe is that what Andy is as far as you right because that, you, you probably worked with her the more than anybody. What well, I was like, yeah, we ask uh, like, we uh, ask to uh, uh, let Andy Gilly respond. Have to vote. Yes, yeah, sure. Let's. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a motion to to, 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 suspend suspend the rules. to suspend the rules. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I guess I made the motion. Oh, Never mind. Somebody else can second. I'll save her. Okay. Uh, I, 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 are, are you aware of uh, Holiday Fest itself give it, getting any uh, grants or or? Could you explain what Holiday, Fe Holiday Fest does? Holiday Fest is a 501c3 that operates about 20 to 30 events in Sumner County each year. They are a nonprofit that basically uh, has a good way to put it. Like the Rotary Club, sometimes we call them legal money launderers. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, an organization that, that wants to have a fundraiser that may not have their own charity, or 501c3, partners with Holiday Fest, and, the, and they will collect the money and disperse it to the charities. So the answer uh, is then they, they support like, probably 20 different charities. One of them is Big Fest. We at the city of Hendersonville, you know, it, I don't know if you've ever tried to buy anything with a, a government check before, a lot of last week, but um, it's a lot of red tape. So we very often partner with 501c3s because the people in the business community a lot of times have a hard time writing a check to the government to sponsor things. They would rather write it to a 501c3, and then the 501c3 can turn around and pay the bills and disperse the money to the charities like Great Place or Live Love Nashville or things like that. So last year, I do think last year, um, you, you may have, they may have, there's different, sometimes when we partner with people like PigFest is a good example, we, the city sponsors that for about 25,000 and then we get about 90 other sponsors that all write the check to Holiday Fest. So I think for this one, you probably did get an invoice from Holiday Fest for maybe not, did you write I to the city? So. I might think not have, I, I don't know. It, it could have, have, but I don't well, remember. I'm just saying yes, I don't remember. Yeah. She did tell me that they pay for the advertising for Pig Fest. They, they, yeah. they, 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 yeah, they, yeah, they pay for several it was $5, I mean, they, they pay about $90,000 for expenses. Well, I, I they're just a bronze know, sponsor. I don't she, know when she that brought that up. Yeah. That's, that's now, whether whether or not they, I don't, you know, the city of Hendersonville doesn't give Holiday Fest any money. I don't know if they've ever technically come to the, the county or the tourism office and asked for money for their events. So we partner with them a lot, okay. but specifically do we write so the checks? So no. was your, I'm sorry, just your statement was that Hendersonville has never given money to Holiday Fest. That is correct. Has, has Holiday Fest given money to Hendersonville or to anything that Hendersonville has From Pig Fest last year, they wrote a check back uh, for $20,000 to Mary's Magical Place. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it happens quite frequently. Okay, so I think that was helpful information. I would say a conflict you. of interest answer would be yes. Thank you. So uh, someone approached me, and I'm not very familiar with this gentleman, but I met him through uh, another uh, event that was the county uh, that a business is ministry day, and he was on that committee. Um, you all probably know him. His name is Kevin Johnson. He expressed interest in the role and being able to step in as interim. I, but I didn't have any information at that time. It was very early after um, uh, she had tendered her resignation. So I did not have any further information to share with him. I can send you all the email he sent me, but that is, that is I have met him twice. I can't at, tell at you anything else about him. What did you say, the uh, ministry? It was a business as ministry event. That, business uh, as yes, ministry. Yes, Living oh, okay. Ministry yeah. oh, okay. partnered yeah. with uh -huh. that, and it was a countywide initiative. And what teams about, went and prayed. What about reading, reading us the email? Instead? I can read it. Would that be you. sure? Would that be appropriate for her to read the email? We can. I haven't seen a resume though, so it's not yeah, really I have, I, useful. It, it does not have okay. a resume. Considering attached Considering the to fact it. that we do have resumes from qualified candidates. Um, it says, "Good morning. I want to touch base with you to see if I can meet with you next week to talk to you about the county tourism position." He sent this to Mayor Isabel, and then he forwarded it to me. Um, this would be a dream job for me. I have extensive experience managing people and building teams. I understand the importance of the budget dollars that the tourism department contributes to our county budget. I've also negotiated many sports events and worked with CEOs and event coordinators. With my experience and reputation with local officials, I believe I can add professional and trusted leadership for our county with this position. I can start immediately and fill the void left by the previous tourism director, thus giving you the assurance of having a dedicated leader who can pick up right where they left off. I know that God is leading me to speak with you, and I know God will lead us together to fulfill his will for our county. Please let me know what day you can meet, and I will happily share with you the vision and direction for the growth of Center County as director of this very important and vital position. Please let me know you've received this email. And I, I did talk to him a little bit about why he felt he was qualified, and he said he had done a lot with the Hendersonville Chamber of Commerce and had been 
instrumental in some golf tournaments and some different things like that. So that that's the extent of knowledge that I have about this gentleman. Oh, okay. I don't have an, any idea who. Kevin I don't know Johnson. who that is. No, I don't know either. So I think it's. Yeah, I've been sharing one of those. It has to be okay to have a city resume <laughs> in if he's interested in the permanent in the yeah. in the yeah. position. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. because he's is he since you met him is he retired looking for? Uh, you know, I, a job? I don't know that information. Oh, okay. <laughs> since I'm he sorry, said he could start like immediately, more. I didn't know if he if he said that he was. I was just curious. Do you want to tell us about um, Eric? Eric. Eric's been in the hotel industry at Hilton. He's now I think, uh, coordinates the convention center up in uh, St. Louis. He's going to retire July first. Uh, he's willing to step up. He works from Hendersonville. So could he work 40 hours a week? I don't know. Uh, that's the only thing, because you know, between now and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we don't have a resume for him, do we? Mm -hmm. we yes, do. we do. No, we do. It's not in the list, Back but we have seen it in the past. Um, okay. Yeah. The gentleman you know, gentleman I know. And your Kevin sounds like he's more interested in the executive, like I'm um, sure full time is his ultimate goal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, but I mean, like full time, Permitted. more than ninety days. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. looks very interesting and qualified, but... Who is this? The, okay. Yeah, well, but I don't know Robert that he's going to get about his job uh, for a 90-day yeah. stint. Yeah, and, so. and based on his resume, um, given his age, I would, I don't think he would. I think that would be a huge gamble because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. he's, he's fairly young. I would think that that would be a gamble at yeah. that age. Yeah, I just I don't think... Uh, have we had any? Have we had any particular interest in the interim position? Anybody who specifically has said, "I'm only interested in the inter interim position." Uh, I think it's this Ephraim's guy. Yeah, he yeah. said that he's in, he said that he's interested in the interim, and if if he if it turns out to be longer term than that, then he understands that he'll go through that process. But he understands there's no guarantee. And your gentleman also was comfortable with him as well. Is that right? But he has his own, he has a business in Red Boiling Springs. Is he going to be able to come to work, come into the office every day? Uh, that's a good question. And that is a commute. He's, to be here <laughs> he's operating a bed for breakfast, and that's what, an hour from here? Oh, probably better. Hour and a half. Yeah. Probably better. Solid. Yeah. So we would just need to follow up with him on that piece if he needs to be in the office every day. He's I mean, that was my concern with him is he looks like he has yeah. his hands in a lot of things. I mean, he's um, got his entire family running his hotel, so. Yes. Yeah. So we have not posted necessarily that there's an interim position. We have only posted the full-time position. Mm -hmm. So oh, people. Well, our going in position was fill an executive director role. Right. We've been unable to discuss anything because we haven't had quorum two sessions in a row. And now we're in a situation where we have a single employee who probably would enjoy some assistance. I will say it's nice. Um, I'm not exactly by myself. I have the commerce with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> the The ghosts. Oh, that's funny. Oh. Oh. So if he could only work, could he come in every day and work 10 to 2 or? 
Do y'all uh-huh. have like a busy day, part of the day at the office? Honestly, for it depends on the day. A lot of times it's after lunch. Yeah. Is when we get a few more people in. Um, but of course, our normal working office hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine it depends on events. It does depend on events. It depends on if someone is looking for sponsorship to someone needs assistance in the area. So mm-hmm. it always depends. Every day is different. All right. Well, so let's talk. Let's just talk through this scenario. You're, you're on vacation half of June, right? So I'll actually be leaving. I'll be out the 14th through the 23rd I'll return Monday the 24th Mm -hmm. one of those days during that week is the 18th it's Kelly's last day so I assume that you'll be in office Um, and then the Wednesday the 19th is Juneteenth it's a federal holiday so it'll be closed so it'll only be about four days Mm -hmm. in total oh I didn't think about that Mm -hmm. yeah so as the only person there when you're gone Comer House will just be closed yes is that a true fact yes it's a fact and then I will also in the extent of my vacation I will have no cell service all the other country. So. Well, we would not call you on vacation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, this is not your fault. <laughs> Do you guys have any volunteers that have worked before to help man phones or provide information or, or, or people that are familiar with how the operation works that might be able to step in for a few hours a day until at least Maddie returns? No. I don't think we have anybody who would be Okay. What about somebody who's on summer vacation because of the pal that's been in t- worked in the tourism office? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What about somebody who has worked at the tourism office who's now working back in the school system who's out for the summer? I mean, if that's a possibility, we could ask Sue Morrison. I don't know. She would be the only one I could think of that could do that if she does work for the school system. I don't know if she would be willing to come back or not, but has she expressed any long, interest? No, but um, as long as we, she knows that there's a start and an end time to do this, you know, that it's just a very temporary thing. It's not like you're inviting her back to work there, just for that week. Yeah, I don't know. How does that work with payroll? How would we pay her? Does that work with well, I guess the, the contract yeah, employee. Yeah, but I guess the question is: Are, are we re- is Comer House required to be open? Period. Or is there any way to phone? I, the the phones. I mean, the phones could all be put on a answering machine. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. the email, you know, a response. I'll also have my the person email set up yep. as well. Takes care yep. of that might just handle those few days. Is there anything going on during that period of time that? He has to be in. there 40 hours a week. Not that I'm aware of. Our next big thing will be triple S second July. Transfer to a completely different. There's no real events at that time. So. Yeah, so there's no events going on. There's a, she, she could forward it to voicemail and to and forward her email to or you know put a tag on her email saying that she's out of the office until such a, such a date. That, I mean, I, I mean, I'm less concerned about that. I'm more concerned about are we. Like, are we legally required to have the Comer House open? No. no. Okay, then it doesn't matter. It'll just be closed. Oh. I just needed to confirm that. Yeah, we're legally so required to have the Douglas Technically, we don't have to have anybody there ever. Is there, oh, you said you didn't think the person who does Douglas Clark knows enough about the tourism? Uh, I don't know if he knows enough. To, he can't, can he be, could, could we forward funds to Douglas Clark? Clark? Yes. <laughs> No, probably not. <laughs> That's he what he I doesn't was know thinking. anything. I don't think he knows anything about the tourism except his his he knows little about his corner. Yeah. County so history. so putting a note on the door at Comer House to go to the yeah. Clark, the Clark House yeah. wouldn't help. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, at the end of the day, if we're not legally required to have it open, then it'll be closed if nobody's available. And that's just how it'll be. Okay. Until we can. So ultimately what we, I mean, so when we're identifying an interim director, what are the specific things that you need, that this interim director absolutely has to do? Like what are the things that we absolutely need this person to do? That way we can determine whether or not any of the people that have expressed interest in an interim role are required to do. And Maddie, since you're here, like what is your opinion on it? 
my personal opinion is bringing in someone who is younger. Um, I would specifically say between 30s and 40s is kind of my take on it just because um, we have started up a new branding on it and of course the marketing world is very different than um, some people have brought up, been brought up and learned. So bringing an interim director that is a little bit younger is something that I would probably say is a really good benefit for the organization as a whole. But other than that, someone who understands finance, someone who understands HR, um, of course, business management is always a plus, marketing, communications, stuff like a plus. Um, I do think hotel experience is good. However, a hotel doesn't cover all of tourism hospitality. You have to have a little bit more of that umbrella around it because hotel isn't everything. Uh, we see that every single day with our job. I just wanted to make a comment about that. You all shouldn't consider age when you're hiring somebody. It shouldn't be a factor. I agree with that. Technical yes. skills, let's put yep. it that way. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying somebody that has that understands finance, somebody that has experience with HR, somebody that has experience with marketing. Someone has experience with digital marketing is a big one for us, um, especially considering coming into more a data analytics um, organizations that we're looking at. We're looking at a few different companies to work with as far as analyt analytics go so we can see who all is coming from where and why they're staying here. And I know that Mason Denning actually sent that out to all of you today, so you have mm -hmm. that information as well. Well, he's been handling all the marketing, all the digital stuff, hasn't he? Yeah, that's he has, his job. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah, so that's, we're going to lose that unless we get somebody who is familiar with it. Yes, and right now he is uh, training me on it. So, okay. I'm cross training on everything on this. <laughs> <laughs> does Mr. E. Frace have digital marketing? Digital marketing? He does. Oh, it is TV radio right now. planning for sure. How I would I would like to make a motion. I would like to make a motion that we contact Mr. Ephros. He does not want this job full time. Correct? Correct. Someone contact him, do a phone interview with him find out how often he can come to the office or what he's willing, you know, whatever. And um, we have to have someone who can, at the interim, will be allowed to sign checks, correct? Yes. You'll have to go through the process again. All over again. <laughs> good thing we haven't finished. Yeah, it's a good thing we haven't finished doing that. It's not finished. I just got it. I just checked my email and it's not finished. Marriage none has not signed yet. It's been two months since I made the request. Yep, it's not. Yeah, wow. it's not done. We know why. Okay. Um, That's for another meeting, though. I would say. Well, but, I, I mean, we can just call her. I mean, she's she's got to do it. She, I can tried. She, can she do it online? I I've left messages. I think you have to, I'm sorry. You you have to go, go into the bank and show ID. In. You can you can actually just send uh, a picture of your ID. That's what I did. I sent a picture of two forms of of ID. So. Yeah, there's one, there's one person that, that just needs to They might be it. a little more technologically. And then the, the process can be completed. Okay. I'm going to, so I'm going to make a motion that we, David, or I will contact Mr. Ephros and find out what he's willing to work. Um, because the most important thing is that we have someone who has... Management experience, and that when you and he's fluent in Spanish. That's right. By the way, I know you don't really have to worry about that a lot, probably. But um, well, I mean, there's a pretty significant Spanish population, Hispanic population in Southern County. Yeah. So um, that we find out how many hours a week he can work, because to me the important thing is having someone in the office with Maddie. That I, I, I'm not concerned that his background is in hotel and not tourism. I think it's very specific to say that the interim has to have 
experience in tourism. So I, I feel like help in the office is more important right now while we get a manager. So Kelly can get back to her her, her, her real her, job. Her life. <laughs> not babysitting us, the board. And um, and so that Maddie can have some breathing room. So yes. Feel like yes. Second it. All right. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I have a question. Just all, we, all we're voting on is her con contacting Mark, right? That's correct. That means that we'll have to have another We'll session. have to have another meeting in order mm -hmm. to, okay. I'm sorry. That's correct. And I just wanted to clarify that. Yep. Um, can I ask a question as yes. well? Um, how, for an interim director, how would a um, an offer to anyone um, be laid out? Uh, is it a contract, a 90-day contract with the with the probably county with the tourism with board? Us. Okay. Tourism board. Okay. Is there anything? that prevents us in bylaws or whatever that prevents, that would hinder doing a 90-day employment contract. I mean, this is, these are things we have to know before. Do, do we need to hire this person as an employee or do we need to contract with this person? Because I, and I don't know all of the employment mm -hmm. laws, but so, yeah, but it, it would eliminate benefits, does exactly. and it does also yeah. does he need benefits? tie our hands a little bit on saying you have to be here a certain hour because you, mm -hmm. with a contract employee, you can't set hour. There's there's different things that fall into place, and I'm not an attorney, so I cannot speak he, to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. he he doesn't need like benefits or anything like that, so we could treat it as a contract. I, I just think it's very important that it, that it's that we make sure it's a contract it's clear. that it's yeah, exactly that it's very clear that yes. this is a 90 day contract that benefit that's not benefits it's not a guarantee of a job after 90 days etc okay. yep I, I agree with that and I also you know I, I don't know what it's more of a management standpoint because we don't really want this person to come in setting new policies and reinventing things mm -hmm. if we're hiring a new director mm -hmm. so that may or I, may I not be that person exactly I think exactly. we need to be very clear with what our expectations are and it kind of sounds like maybe a, a few days a week is all that might be necessary and I do agree with you Maddie and the Comers um, probably <laughs> they probably will protect her but maybe on the times that she does not have a second staff person in the office the door remain locked and, and there's a you know yes. so that she is has the option or something to open the door our Correct. only doorbell that we have currently is when the door actually opens okay mm -hmm. oh, okay we do have a panic button on our key fob for our alarm yes cool. I've asked those yeah. things <laughs> what about getting a uh, it's, it's not a ring doorbell, but there's another one. There's another uh, um, version out there. That, uh, oh, a camera? Yeah. Oh. It's having a camera. Yeah, like a, think ring, of. Yeah, like ring. a ring camera yeah, doorbell. There's two or three different yeah, kinds. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not thinking of a ring. I'm thinking of another company, but that's okay. It's um, Arlo. But it's not something like that. I have a question. Yes, we do. Oh, okay. But there. What? Would it be totally off the wall to consider a temp service, not for the interim director, but for another staff person to be there to assist with just administrative duties, answering the telephone, things like that, that, that we could get through a temp service? Uh, no, I mean, that is it's definitely not. I mean, it's filled. something we can discuss. We have staffing on this okay. list, Sorry, but yeah, no, that's okay. No, but that's, yeah, there's no reason why we can't leverage temporary staffing. Obviously, somebody would need to sign their contract and approve approve that, so it can't be a temp agent. Temp I didn't even think about that's that. That's typically how a temp, temp agency would work, though, right? You, have temp, somebody, yeah, you work with the agency, not the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They supply the person, right. yeah. so that person gets benefits or whatever through the temp through agency. The agency. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. on, on the Sue situation, when she left, I, Zoe did not explain but I was did she leave in good standing or I would say yes uh -huh. oh, okay would would you want to 
would you would it be okay of like if she could work for a few weeks with y'all in the office this summer would that be this as a temp kind of yeah yeah. just for the summer if she wanted if she wanted to do it that at least you've got someone who knows the process i could step back and ask her i mean i don't mind calling her that's something you want to know oh you don't i mean you don't have i mean I don't, I've met her. I mean, I can call her. I just am asking you as the employee there. I don't see it as an issue at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Because I didn't think about, I forgot that. I thought, she, in my mind, she had a 52 a week year job. I didn't know she was working. Just yeah, she worked in the school system. Right, but I thought she was. So she's off during the summer then. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Yeah, she okay. was a good employee, great employee. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Sue so Morrison. Mm-hmm. Uh, she know. left there once before to go work for the school system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Came back. Okay. All right. Okay. And she came back because she was offered full time. See, she was part time before. Hmm. Okay. Is it because there was only a part time role available? Absolutely. That's what she was hired for initially, was part-time. part-time. <clears throat> and she did that until she was called to, hey, I've got a full-time position for you, and that's when she left the school system went to back to tourism. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And it, so... So at the end of the day, we're not going to be... I, we're not going to... Identify an executive director day. Sounds like we're not going to be able to make a decision on an interim director today either. Is that true? Unless we've got somebody who we know is interested in interim, and you know, if we can interview. I don't see that we can do anything yet. Well, it sounds like we My still opinion. have a few more questions, of yeah. Mr. Efros, before we. Mm-hmm. And is there anybody else in in the pile that? we need to ask if they're interested if they in, in in 90 days only while we're while we're doing that so in case somebody like oh we should have called if we're going to pause and call Mr. Efros then we might as well call <coughs> mm-hmm. it's not yeah yeah well I have a question because we have had difficulty getting this group together. Does it make sense since you know Mr. Efros for you to reach out to him? Maybe we uh, take a five minute recess and you call him and we put him on speakerphone to ask some of these questions so that maybe we can move forward tonight? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can see if he'd be willing I, to have I just know a we're against the wall, you know, <laughs> yep. time is of the essence. Oh, I know. I, yes. We've okay. Do we? Well, okay. I mean, is it appropriate to pause this conversation for a moment so we can take care of him? So yes. We can leave? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna. Andy. All right. So we'll go ahead and and. Um, I take the list for the moment. Yeah. So can I get a motion? To, uh, I'll. I'll move. Yeah. Okay. A motion that we table this for the moment so Andy can speak. Sure. Okay. Do you have a second? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, then we'll move to the next item of business, which would be Pig Fest, <laughs> which is under the sponsorships. It's done here or it's done here? You can say it if you like. Whatever you want me to do. Oh, here's Pig Fest. Thank you all. My name's Andy Gilly. I'm the Parks Director for the City of Hendersonville. Um, appreciate what you all are going through. You have a monumental task in front of you that affects our entire county um, in terms of appointing directors and seeing sponsorships and investing back. So I appreciate it. Um, I think we're here to discuss our request for a Pig Fest sponsorship again this year. That has uh, background on the Pig Fest. It started years ago with um, a fundraiser for the Teen Center that has since gone out of business. And uh, right before COVID, um, Holiday Fest came to us and uh, kind of wanted to take that event to the next level to raise more money for the Teen Center. So we were, we were going to have a big barbecue competition and uh, thing in the park. And COVID happened that, that year. Um, and at the same time that was going on, 
Christmas for Kids, which is one of our 501c3s that supported, was in danger of, during COVID of not being able to do their Christmas that they do the bus tour and all that. So we, the teen center went out of business, went the funk. So we took Pig Fest and shifted it and worked with Live Love Nashville and the city and Holiday Fest and to get Christmas for Kids up and running during COVID. Since then, we've expanded it greatly. Um, it went from like seven barbecue teams four years ago to now we have already sold out all 50 spots for this year. Um, we went from 30 sponsors two years ago to last year we had 90. Um, we were able to donate back $50,000 to these local 501c3s. 20,000 of that went to Mary's Magical Place and then the, the rest was divided up between Grace Place, Live Love Nashville, and Christmas for Kids. Um, why do we need money for Mary's Magical Place? Well, I'll just in case y'all are unaware, the flood we just had, um, the city's insurance doesn't cover the flooring that's in Mary's Magical Place. Um, also, like twice a year, we'll have people come around and do inspections on the equipment there. Typically, that's a seven to ten thousand dollar bill uh, twice a year to go towards just the maintenance of the playground. Let alone, we're uh, we're made aware now because of the way things change like wheelchair swings that are in Mary, Mary's Magical Place, all-inclusive playground. I don't know if some of y'all may, may or may not be aware of that. But the wheelchair swing that we got was from Australia. They don't even make parts for it anymore, so we're going to have to kind of pivot on and install a new piece of equipment. Don't know if you've ever bought playground equipment or not. Um, if you've ever been to any of our parks and you see these small playgrounds, those are now like twenty to $30,000 a piece just for those little small ones. So you can imagine a playground that's 15,000 square feet, what that costs. So, why do we need money? We need, we need money to obviously run the event. Um, we have, when you collect that much sponsorship money, I, you know, I can tell you that what our focus when we ask the tourism board for money is from the park standpoint or from any event that comes to us and says, well, can we get money from tourism? And we say, are your people staying from out of town? Are you bringing people to the community? We are very, very specific and careful what we bring to this board. Um, there's a there's a 200 team hockey tournament going on in Hendersonville right now that has teams from all over the country, including NHL players playing, that didn't come here and ask for a penny. Um, so there's a lot of things that go on that we don't come to. There are things that like the USSSA uh, tournaments that you all graciously sponsored, those things we need help making those happen so they don't go to Franklin or Chattanooga or Murfreesboro because we do want to capture all their restaurant and gas and sales tax and hotel tax. Pig Fest specifically, we try to take the funds that the tourism board has always given us and direct it straight towards advertisement. We have around a $5,000 budget. Um, one of the big things to some of our key sponsors is to be on Monday Night Football during the fall advertising Pig Fest. So, that's kind of cool that that many people will see the city logo, the tourism logo, and, our, and some of our other sponsors. But that is what you, this money from you all, we kind of direct straight towards TV. Uh, newspaper, we're on the, um, basically the country radio stations because our Friday night concert is usually a country music concert. So. Mm -hmm. We have 50 barbecue teams. We have uh, over 250 judges from multiple states come in just to eat barbecue. Uh, you all are welcome to, to do that <laughs> if you're so inclined. Um, last year, I think I put this in the email that we sent. We, we did the, the I think y'all have, have experience from uh, Placer. I think y'all may have had the demo done or talked about that where they, like it or not, they ping our cell phones. Um, we know last year on Friday night we had over um, 2,000 unique devices. That doesn't count kids that don't have devices. And we know on Saturday we had over 4,000 unique devices in the park for those events so we can tell where they came, you know, how far they came from, Michigan. I will tell you, the grandson of the founder of Weber Grills has been to Pig Fest the last two years. And he lives in Michigan and comes down for Pig Fest. Kind of crazy, but that's my sales pitch. I do want you to know I appreciate all you all do. Um, I think we, we kind of looked at it the other day. There's like... I don't know, there's multiple events that you all help us with when it comes to softball tournaments or concerts or things. And we, I do want you to know we constantly are evaluating and trying to see what can we do to bring people here so that if we can keep our taxes low and these people can help pay for it, which you all 
this office, I think, before I was an alderman and before I was the parks director, I was just a travel baseball coach who wanted to, I got tired of driving to Murfreesboro for tournaments, so I came to Barry and I said, can you help us get more than just the senior women's tournament in Hendersonville? <laughs> and that was when we got the first Game 7 World Series. And since then, it has been like a cannonball out of the gate. People, people didn't even come here for tournaments other than like high school softball and senior women and one major travel softball tournament. And that was less than 10 years ago. And now we have a tournament every weekend from February through November on our baseball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, rugby, hockey. It's crazy. So I appreciate y'all's support with that. We could not do it without you. And you all do a great service. And these folks are the finest people on earth. So thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Wade. It's a multi-day event, is that? Right? Two days, yes, two days. it is two days. Uh, we'll have a lot of people come in on Thursday night and stay because they get up on Friday, they start loading in at nine o'clock and smoking their, their meat mm -hmm. <laughs> on for our Friday morning. So Andy, how many people are on a team? Like you have 50 teams, just the uh, teams? It can, like it can, we had a guy last year, one of the guys that placed in one of the categories was by himself. Uh, but then there are people that bring as many as 10 to 20 on a team and stay. And, you know, a couple guys will usually spend the night at their site, obviously, but a lot of their wives and the kids will go to the hotel. Some of them stumble to the hotel. <laughs> Is there Sorry. Any way to tell, like, because they're tired. Yeah, yeah that's why they're, they're, they're weary. Yeah. 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 Right, that's it. Uh, is there any way to tell how many of the, the judges and people are coming or staying in Sumner County hotels versus uh, we, Davidson we don't, County? We can ask them that. People. I mean, we don't, we don't necessarily have a survey that says which hotel did you stay in. I have the list of where they're all from. Um, we didn't. So you don't. During our demo, we didn't uh, ping their phone. We, you can do that. If you have the, the place or full program, you can determine where somebody came from. When they leave the park, what hotel they go to, mm -hmm. or what restaurant they go to, or how long, and how long they're in in your event, or how long they stay at that. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary. It is scary. It is scary, but <laughs> life walking out. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, like, a bittersweet. We uh, Triple SA tournament. Um, off topic, but. We were able to tell the, from from our demo we had, we did uh, the Isaacs Pig Fest and the AAA tournament. We were able to tell that like over a week's time, 800 people left Veterans Park and went to Culver's during the softball tournament. <laughs> so we turned around and went to Culver's and said, would you be willing to help feed the umpires this week? And they helped, so that was critical. We would have never probably thought, I don't go to Culver's, so I don't mm -hmm. Didn't realize that many people loved custard. <laughs> <laughs> or a better burger. Yeah. <laughs> if they're from Indiana, they're from Yeah, the very. Very. Yeah. Yeah. very. And we do get a lot of that. We get a lot of Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Georgia. All right. That's a great event. Yeah. Okay. Great job. Thanks, Andy. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. We appreciate you. Thank you. Any questions from anyone else? Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks. Okay. we come back to this when we get sponsorships then? Oh, we'll or just, did do you we need contact to make, him? No, no we have to adjourn. I mean, recess. 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 Okay. To do what? So I'm going oh. to yes. call this guy and see if he'd be willing yes. to talk to us. So. Yes. All right. Is that okay? I'll make a motion we recess for five minutes. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Take a five minute recess. All right, we'll bring the meeting back into session. Uh, I was unable to reach Mark Efro, so I'm going to have to contact him outside of this meeting and we'll have to schedule another special session. Um, when is our regular session? June 18th. June 18th. When will you be gone? Can we meet? Could we meet next week? Next Tuesday? Look at the calendar for next week to see what the day of the week is. Not. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, we have a meeting June 18th. Mm -hmm. I do not have that on my calendar. I don't think we ever set the schedule for this.
this semester or this fall, this spring. We had so a meeting in May, the next session, unless I don't know what the schedule is, but it shouldn't be until July. Right. That's the next what meeting I thought. should be yeah. July. Yeah, I don't have it down for town. Oh, yeah. Are they at, uh, it's like animal control? Oh, I knew, I knew something like that. What about Thursday? Uh, 14th, I'm saying the 13th. 13th, yeah. Yeah, 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 ye
I didn't even know they still existed. Oh, I can't yeah. believe I'm saying that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have, I have 420 yeah. tabs. Do they have a temporary yeah. commissioner? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I still would advocate for going through a temp agency, even for somebody that we know, just to keep it all above board, that it truly is a temporary position that she is not being offered a job again. That's just my suggestion. Well, and I do think that eliminates some of the uh, payroll and some of those concerns because all of that will be handled through that. So we'd have to ask Sue to go. If she would want to go through a temp. Well, we would have to identify a temp agency. They don't work. First of all, call a temp agency and they call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. it's easy to fix. It sounds easy, but we have to identify a temp agency. Well, if that's the way, what temp agency do you want to use? I, when we first moved to this area, I worked for a temp agency mm -hmm. um, because I just kind of wanted to get the, the lay of the land and, and before I figured out where I wanted to go. And I didn't have to interview with anybody beforehand. They just sent me yeah, based on my qualifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up staying there for three years. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, that is, but I have worked on the other side as an HR director with temps and if they don't work out you call the temp agency and say this one's not going to yes. work get this person no, i'm not opposed to using a temp agency i worked for a temp agency for a while before mm -hmm. when i was first starting my career so i'm not opposed to that yeah. at yeah. all and However, i don't say for the interim director but need, for the yeah. administrator yeah yeah, yeah 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 is there a local one uh first call staffing has got an office in portland i know and I know that they service a lot of industry in Sumner County, so I think there's a. I've seen a sign for a wood. Wood is over by okay. a big lot. Uh, Ron Stott too has got offices in yeah. several yeah. locations. Yeah, that been around for a long. They're the. Oh, yeah. They're probably the most well known well in the industry. Known. Yeah. Wood. Well, Ron Stott's probably more administrative. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is going to sound lame, but I'm all about supporting a local business if we can. Mm -hmm. So who's as well, the local? If we one? have a local temp agency. I mean, like Someone Kelly Services, would, that they're great know. for your national. Kelly book. Services. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But if we can support a local business, I would sure. prefer that over a national business. Mm -hmm. Just speaking frankly, so I think Wood is local, locally owned. I think. Okay. Okay. All right. Short of that, I think you'd have to write up an employee contract. Yeah. Yep, I agree with that. So. If we're going to contact a temp agency, do we have job descriptions for the vacant positions that already exist? Because we'll need to provide those job descriptions to the temp agency so they know what kind of resource we're looking for. Um, I think so. I redid everyone's job yeah. description. It should be probably upstairs in her file. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we'll need to get a copy of those I'm happy to contact the temp agency if nobody else is interested in doing that okay that and I'll like take, mis take care of Mr. E first yeah well okay. you want to contact the other people who apply to see if they're interested in the interim position also would you want to reach out to them as well yes I can do that okay yes <laughs> that's fair are any of you familiar with Barrowman Baker LLC. It's a staffing agency that's listed as a Gallatin Chamber member. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. not familiar with it. <clears throat> and I hate to bring this up. I'm supposed to sit here and be quiet, but I never can do that. <laughs> but would, if you're interested in hiring a temp temporary person, would there any, be any issue with the asbestos in our building? Not as long as it's contained. I mean, I don't know. I just thought I. I, really I, I, so. I don't know, Maddie. Are you, are you concerned <laughs> yeah, about concerned. asbestos in your building? Um, our only concern at the moment is in our kitchen. We have a piece of the ceiling that has been taken off, and we have had no one able to come put it back up. And the pipes up in there are covered or wrapped in asbestos. And we've I've tried and tried and tried yes. to get someone. I, I get people to come out there and I get people to look at it, but I cannot. Did they keep the piece of wood that was quote. over that hole? It's, yes. it's sitting in the kitchen. Yes. We have maintenance. Have, can we, have you asked maintenance, the mayor? For I don't know how. I don't know how y'all get the work done. Oh, did maintenance come when our maintenance does not come? They're not associated. They're county, and we are not I, county. I just know they came yeah. out when the pipes right. burst initially. And yeah, and it's a piece of wood. It's just a piece of wood. It's screwed. It's like a yeah. piece of um, 
It's painted. It's like the stuff that's in the shower, you know? The oh, okay. Shower board? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can disclose that. Okay. I just thought I'd better bring it up. It's fine. Sorry. No, we need to okay. hire somebody to take care of that? She's Pardon? tried. Do we need to hire somebody to take care of that? I've tried and tried and tried and tried. So why didn't the plumber put it back up when they fixed the pipes? Because it had to dry or something? It had to dry. It wasn't dry. Oh. Well, were they blowing air up there? No. I okay. hope not. Yeah, because I was going to say that. That's going to blow everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. We can disclose that. If um, So I will need copies of the job descriptions. And are those job descriptions filed? I'm going to ask two questions. First question, are those job descriptions filed somewhere where anyone who's a member of the board or an employee of some kind of tourism can access it? Yes. Okay. I've not ever accessed them, but yes, we can access them. And uh, if in my second question is, is there a place where all all these documents can be stored so that anybody that needs access to them can access them? Is there anything that's not public information? Electronically. Electronically. There is things in there that are confidential just because they have our social security card numbers in there. And yeah, I'm not, and, yeah, yeah, I'm not no. talking about that. I'm just talking no, about that. things that are that technically should be public knowledge anyway. Like the bylaws, for example. Anybody can see the bylaws, right? So like, is there a place where all of those documents are stored, at least for me only? I have all of those documents in the minutes, in the current. I mean, we have stacks of Got books it. that have minutes in it, but it, they're all in the minutes book. Okay. Typically, if an individual were to want documentation, they would have to do a records request. Right. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, temp agency. I'm gonna, yeah. Do we need a motion for that? Do. Um, are we contacting these other applicants or only the. A motion to, to identify some yeah, possible answers. Yes. Okay, then. If you're Kevin Johnson, wants to send. Yes, I'll tell him. Yes. Okay, very good. So um, let me articulate the motion, see if that makes sense before we get a second on it. So I motion that we will leverage a temp agency to identify some administrative support for Sumner County Tourism until we're able to identify roles that, that can, can fill permanently post positions and get them interviewed and, and agreed on. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. There we go. So we've got two, two action items. You've got one, I've got one. It's 619. Is there anything else? I mean, there's nothing else we can do from an interim director position standpoint that we have no. discussed. Um, not, nothing else we can do from a staffing standpoint that we haven't already discussed. Um, bylaws, vote to hut, and sponsorship requests are next on the agenda. Um, I move okay. we move bylaws to another special session. meeting. Or the break the meeting. Next regular meeting. meeting. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Bylaws will be moved to the regular session. Which will be July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, next item then is the boat docks at Bull Creek. Uh, Mary Janung took care of that. I know she called and she told her recommendation was that the so the county law director emailed me two months ago and said that the boat dock permits at Bull Creek had expired in December of 22. The Corps had contacted the county and asked do we want to extend those that permit I had asked 
Kelly, when was the last time we used those boat docks? Yet Mary Janung, if am I allowed to speak for a, an absent board member? She's a commissioner. No. She, her recommendation was because they live over there on the lake, was that we keep the permit um, regardless because once it's gone, we can't get It'll it back. Come back so, so I will motion that we contact the Corps of Engineers to keep the permit. However, my question is, <laughs> are we actively paying insurance on a boat, on that boat dock? We are actively paying insurance. Okay, is it just a one year, and once I'll, a year? All we really have to do is write the Army Corps of Engineers a letter, and I'd be happy to do that if somebody wants to sign it. I just don't feel comfortable I think I think Eric can take, I think Eric said he could just take care of it. He could just call them. So I'll find okay. out about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pointing at the empty chair where Eric used to sit. That's, that's Eric that's, right that's there. I'm aware of this. I think, I'm, aware of this. I I think, know, I'm aware of what's going on with this. So, Stephen, would you like to address the matter? <laughs> I'll take up. Staff it attorney. Up. Yeah, I'll run it up to Eric and we'll take care of it. Perfect. Okay. And I'll second okay. your motion. All right. Okay. All, All right. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So it sounds like we're keeping the boat dock. And we know what next action items are to retain that. So, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, let's move to the next item, which is sponsorship requests. Um, I would say let's start with Mr. John Hurd and Second Gen Graveyard, since he was kind enough to be present to tell us about what he is interested in. Um, before we do that, there is a note on the sponsorship request for June 2024 that sponsorships are over budget. We have to keep that in mind as well. But does that mean we're over budget on you are everything? Way un no, you're just way under budget. We're under budget in general, over in general. budget on sponsorships. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there is some reasoning behind the over budgeting when you look on that um, sheet that I sent. Part of the reason is that um, the new SA is twenty-five thousand dollars for this year, but that's also that's a, a prepaid a prepaid asset. So it'll be credited when we do our audit. It'll be a journal entry that'll be credited to this year, and then it will be taken out of next year's budget. Okay, got it's yeah. the same for Comic Con. So that's thirty thousand dollars right there. And then last year, as some of the board members may recall, we. Um, did a $15,000 deficit budget, and that was for the ABA FAM tour. Mm -hmm. So that's about $50,000 right there. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Perfect. All right, Thank that's you. good information. So for this year, we're fine. Because so these year, are for next year, actually. Next year, you'll get to be hit because yeah. you're going to be hit with $30,000 in sponsorships. Yeah. 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 Okay. And your funding is decreasing. All right, very good. So, do we need to, do I need to make a motion to discuss every single one of these? Or no. Just a, all right. I don't think well, so. I'll make a motion to discuss all the sponsors. Sponsors. We are starting okay. with. Starting with. Starting with. Second gen. Second gen graveyard. Okay. 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 Mm, not eight like for a thousand dollars. I love car shows. I would say um, give them the money. But I would look that be my recommendation. Yeah. The thing about this is a. They literally benefit every part of Sumner County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just I, love, yeah, they go around. I love that they go yeah. around. They're for asking that. for hardly yeah. any money at all. Exactly. And it's something they're going to make annual. I and um, I, downtown. I, I yeah. saw yeah. how many yeah. people <laughs> participated. Cool. So for a thousand dollars, I think cool. it's a small amount, and it brings a lot of people into the mm -hmm. county. motion to approve. I mean, definitely Second. making more. Taxes, tax revenue. Mm -hmm. So we had a so. Um, motion and a second in case you didn't hear it. Okay, it? all right, all in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay. Pig Fest. Uh, the next one is Pig Fest. Pig Fest was here as well. I don't see that looks like the, this. the yep. formal it's just a, it's an email. sheet. Yeah. It's just an email, and it appears they're requesting $5,000. 2023 response was 5000 Thank you for doing this, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing this. this. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Why don't we drop to 2750 after we're dealing with 5002 in 
2021, you know? I think because, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's because that might have been after COVID. Or they may have only requested. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. What were they asking for this year? They're asking for 5000 Oh. I and the... Okay. <laughs> well, because it's not clear in here, you have to like sift through and find yeah. this, mm -hmm. this dollar amount somewhere. Um, which is fine. So $5,000. This will also be from next year's budget. This will be from next year's yeah, budget. Yeah, this is in October. Yeah. This is in October. Yeah. Okay. Is this a one checker or is this seven different checks? No, this is a one, one checker. Check. <laughs> <laughs> we all speak. Understand language. your question. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. Speaking the same. Yeah. 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 Just so everyone knows, if I ever make a motion to approve a sponsorship, I'm going to approve it with the expectation that we're only writing one check. So <laughs> <laughs> if okay. everyone disagrees with that, then we'll have to redo it. But I'm always motioning okay. that from right. now on. Okay. Um, I move that we approve this. So we can discuss it. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. With the expectation that we're only writing one check. <laughs> That's right. Okay. okay. Big fest. Let's get. Okay. The witness out. Big fest. And next is bold aviation. All right. Should they get this is a, 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 no, something they off the like, they're they're right. take off Short take off the ninety. Yes. yes. Yeah. Which was really cool last year. Mm -hmm. My husband went it's and cool. he said it was a uh, lot of fun. Really cool. um, I've got a friend who's building an aircraft, building his own airplane. And I was mentioning this to him last year and he said they, that, that these things are very well attended and, uh, and they're really good events. It was a great event last year. I kind of hate to be a curmudgeon, but... Instead of five times, well, I'm not doing that right. Instead of three, goes in Six times. Yeah, that's I kind of almost feel better with uh, 10,000 instead of 15. Yeah. 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 I don't like that 15 number. <laughs> we, did not give, we did not give them nearly that much. Right, I'm looking at it. We gave them $2,750,000. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that 15 number at all. Um, well, I'm I kind of curious. Their, their projected <laughs> expenses for event fees is $25,000. But for what? Well, I mean, is, they're they're they have to rent? having to pay the airport. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm wondering. Is, is there and, and yeah. their staff? And I'm speculating, but that would yeah, be. That's my guess. Guess. Well, I guess where's the other forty-one thousand? The rest, the balance of the forty-one thousand coming from because the organization is providing zero funds according to this. I, don't you have to pay to participate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're projected expenses on this. And they got ticket oh, there's, price. There's, yeah. 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 Tickets to enter, I guess to enter. Yeah, fifteen dollar admission for a spectator. Yeah. Oh, did it say how much they made last year? What, what, the the mm -hmm. like. <laughs> what is the date of this one? October eleventh, twelve. It's also next year's yeah, budget. Next year. So this is also next year, yes. and we're also over budget next year. No, not yet. I mean, I don't yeah. know what the budget is for next year. There's a good chance. <laughs> we yes, we do need to be careful because if. They cut our budget by two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Yeah. Um, why don't we just double that and give them fifty five hundred? I agree. You did say a very large jump from twenty seven. Yeah, to I would agree. Fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. I'd be, so I'd be good with that. We're projected of eleven hundred people last year. You also could table this one because it's not until October. If you wanted to see what the actual, because I know the budget's not even. When is the final draft of the budget isn't even proposed? Well, that might be done safer. Yet. Right. So you could table this one. If. When is the ARPA coming to tourism? We've gotten ARPA already for 22, 23, 23, 24. So we'll have to re. Apply in. I mean, we're designated to get money, but we will have to get our paperwork. Is it that three hundred eighty-one thousand dollars, or was that the total? That's the total. I think next year's like fifty-one. So it's 
So you were awarded, so tourism was awarded $381,000, and you only get a little bit at a time. Over five years, I think. Oh, okay. I think I don't, I've not had anything to do with the ARPA, but you can tell I even spelled it wrong. I think it, I thought it was A-R-P-A, it's just A-R-P. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, I believe that's the way it works. Is next year the, the final year? No. So there's two more? There's two more. It okay. has to be. There might even be three. Yeah, the last I mean, payment three. is in 26. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what, so it's only 50,000. But let me, let me okay. just clarify that because we have to get information from the state because I don't, and I, you've read it. I've not read the guidelines. I just forwarded them to you. But it's my understanding that that money could possibly be in jeopardy based on the significant cut that tourism is going to experience in the 24-25 fiscal year. For the state tourism? Is it a county or our no, county? No, county. county. So it's a sliding scale based right. on funding. Could, okay, so for a $200,000 lower budget, we may not get as much money from our budget. We may not get any. Okay. And is this... Or we may get it all. 131000 is what... That the 131000 was for last year and this year. So that was combined. That's combined. So about sixty. Mm, okay. So we need to, I don't know that we need to table this. Well, no. <coughs> so their ticket price is $15 for adults, and what they're requesting is $15,000, and based on their forecast, so it's essentially $7.50 per person that they're asking for us to pay for. It seems a little high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> $15,000 for an event that only brings 2,000 people and 400 of them are local people mm -hmm. who are already spending money in Sumner County. So do you want to do less than $5,500? Do you want to keep them at $2,750? Only, honestly, I mean, I'll, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to make a motion for this yet, but I'm just going to say if we keep them at what we of what we approved last year and a reconsideration if they can provide like a like better data on why fifteen thousand is the right number then I would reconsider it at a higher amount. Later it's the October so they've got time to provide it but they know all they did is provide like projected expenses and only two numbers that I could see and those numbers are 2,000, expecting around 2,000 people, and 400 of those are local people. Because we average 400 local. Detail on event fees. Yeah. And well, yeah. paying. <laughs> do, and yeah, do the participants pay to enter the competition? So is there more funding? Like an entry fee? Yeah, there's yeah, a whole exactly. expense page here, but there's no There's no entry income fee. Income page. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that where's but the rest only, of the money coming from? Right, well, plus how do they know 2,000? They only had 1,200 people, so they're saying, well, it, we're, we're going to... it was very well advertised last year, to be honest. Right, so how are they going to double that? Well, he, they kind of came in at the, on the hair of their chinny-chin-chin, chin too, because I, they, I was contacted from another commissioner that they had, they had met this man, and I called him and had him call Zoe. So, I mean, this just popped up last year. It, to me, so I, I think, I felt like he came and spoke to. I thought he came and spoke. I don't think to he spoke to us because I, I know Chad and I don't remember him being here. But wasn't it kind of a? It just seemed to just happen. Yeah. Like it wasn't. That was the first time they had done it. it seemed like a very short turnaround. Yeah. So. Um, I don't think I even knew about it until the weekend like before. It was almost. I was driving happen. by the airport yeah. and wondering why are there all these food trucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I I would suggest that we go back to Mr. Hall and ask for a little more information, such as do participants pay to enter the competition? Um, because there seems to be a big gap between what their budget is and what they're asking for. So, where's the rest of the money coming from? Mm -hmm. I need an income uh, uh, income statement, don't we? S something more than what we've been given. Yeah, 
Oh. Maybe maybe like just a rehash of last year. Don't we year. ask for a profit loss from the previous event? Isn't that part of what the uh, or some of the analytics from that anyway? Yeah. Well, it'd also be good to know what what it, what is included in the event fees, so that would be helpful to know. Because if you subtract the event fees, the amount of money they they should be earning at fifteen dollars a person on ticket price at two thousand people is thirty thousand dollars. Well, children are free, so assume that only half of those people are paying. It's fifteen thousand dollars. Well, I'm questioning personally what the five thousand dollars for t-shirts is for if there's only a hundred or so entrants in the competition are these t-shirts for resale that they're purchasing that's what it looks this like is a high it's isolated sales it says items. isolated sales items so i'm assuming they're selling them yeah but if you only have 1200 people where are five thousand t-shirts going lot. to i mean that's an expensive shirt <laughs> or wait a minute i'm sorry five thousand dollars not five thousand yeah. people anymore. Yeah. that's assuming <laughs> half the people there are buying a t-shirt well let's just yeah. assume half the people buy a t-shirt I was a deal about t-shirts. I mean, it's t-shirts four dollars a t-shirt. That's so it's yeah. cheap, but if every if you that's just that's a, it pay twelve hundred people buying a shirt. But if you're charging fifteen dollars a t-shirt, you're still making paying. three times what right. you're selling the t-shirt for. I would say we need more information on this before you can make a good decision. I agree. Yeah. On it, so I mean, yeah, you were nice so. to say <laughs> twenty-seven fifty. So I'm not opposed to it, but we got till October, and I honestly yeah. would just like to see some better data. Around. So I move that we postpone this till uh, July until we get some more information. Yep. I, yeah, I and second request. that. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Do, do we need to kick this back to Maddie <coughs> to ask for more info? Is that Probably. how that would work? Yeah. Okay. Kelly, Maddie, know, Maddie would know what to do with that, right? It's not a no, it's a maybe. Okay. Right? Just, yeah, I'll let her maybe. Yeah. I'll let her know. She just needs more information. Okay. All right, what do we have next? We have. I don't know, mine are all mixed up. I know, I'm not sure. Pick one. Yeah, so pick one. Friends of Gallup, Gallup Park. 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 Okay. Sherry Klein. Got it. Uh, let's see. Friends Take Flight, August 10th, 11th um. at Miracle Park. It's an annual. It's, I think this is the first time. Free admission. Right. About hot air balloon. Oh, it's ADA compliant. Um, my only concern with this request is they are not willing to list us as an additional insured. And for something like hot air ballooning, that gives me a lot of concern. Well, that's not required because mm -hmm. it's only $1,000. I would say they get yep. $5,000. You're right. So they don't Sorry. have to. Now, if I, they That's would what, probably first thing asked, I was thinking yeah. is where's the, I went straight to the insurance to check it out. Mm -hmm. Where is this being held? Mir uh, Miracle Park. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is Miracle Park in Dallas? By the Civic Center. Oh, I didn't know it was called Miracle Park. Mm -hmm. To me, it was Triple Creek. No, this is There's different. This one. is by the. This is this is by is, the Civic. Is it by where the oh, it's ball across from the, are. It's across from the pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, old, yeah. That, the, I call it the old park. Yeah, it's an it's an inclusion, okay. and it's an inclusive. Uh, Oh, oh, by the, park. the um, okay. Yeah, water slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got that. Right, that is, yep. <laughs> I was trying to interpret. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I make a motion that we approve their thousand dollar request. They're not asking for I'll say I, I second yeah. that. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Historic downtown Gallatin. We have. Thousand dollar request. This is for Are we Palace at the Theater, Theater Kids okay. Summer Movie the Series. Five dollars each include. Okay, so they're charging a five dollar admission. Um, what are they asking for a thousand dollars for? Possibly to help to offset the like movies. Those movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's like two seventy five per movie. Um, they're asking for a thousand dollars, and the total budget is five. Are these? I don't. I don't have little kids anymore, but I'm assuming these are fairly well attended. They are. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask this question, which is 
Tony's nobody's Tony's favorite question, but I'm asking it anyway. Outside of Gallatin, who's coming to this? Probably. I'm going to say that it's limited outside of the county yeah. attendance. You know, you may have some Hendersonville and, and White House and things like that coming because I'm, it's been a while since I've had small kids, but in the summer, you're looking for things close by to do with your small kids. So maybe you're going to generate some additional sales tax dollars, but it's probably sales tax dollars that are grown within your county. Yeah, and don't you, but don't you think people from Westmoreland and Portland, maybe. Oh, yeah, but yeah, 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 other parts of the yeah. county, Portland, yeah, you're right. the rural parts yeah. particularly. Yeah. Do we know yeah. how many, do we know how many tickets they sold last year? He said 1750 the, the fact that they're charging an admission fee for this, because a lot of times your summer movies are free. You it used to be $2. Or, or yes, if, or something that yeah. you're doing it. But like Regal does it, I think, for a couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. so. I think the palace used to come. But also, I do know that movie licensing is anywhere from two to four hundred dollars, depending it's, on yeah. your movie. And it does, and it includes your concessions. It is. Yeah. 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 It includes and popcorn and drink. Well, yeah. I agree, but this is also which is like two bucks. I mean, is the Palace Theater owned by historic, historic downtown Gallatin? Historic downtown Gallatin. Gallatin. It's owned by owned by Gallatin. No, no, it's a nonprofit. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a, a nonprofit. Yeah. yeah. Barry Young's the director. It's part of the Main Street program. program. And what is the five dollars going to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that's eight. If they have to, the same number of people attend, then that's eight hundred eight thousand seven hundred fifty dollars in revenue. Should be enough to cover there. I don't know how much it costs for popcorn and coke. And it's very small. It's <laughs> the highest profit margin in movie theater in the least, least costly. I, <laughs> I, I know they're only asking for a thousand dollars. Just this doesn't seem like something that some of the county tourism would pay for. I don't know. Somebody, somebody else give an opinion on this one. When I read this one, I, my first thought was what I would rather see them do would be like set up a, a screen in the square and every you know bring your lawn chair don't charge for admission you know you sell cokes or popcorn if you want but I thought that'd be a little more inclusive to yeah. the community than a movie at 10 in the morning again it's just it's for little kids yeah, um, it's, it's, it's targeting yeah, yeah. 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 really four if, if I remember one of them years. there's a time I think it's in the afternoon that they're gonna have daycares bring kids is that is this the one that's doing that? Mm -hmm. This says they take it in the And that's well, usually when it is mixed. Because that's I'm not oh, yeah, I mean, it is, I think yeah. there's value to, in the community for this. The question right. is, a, is the value for all of Sumner County? Yeah, one o'clock. Um, oh, there's actually two showings. There's every two Friday. showings. Okay. Nine thirty in the morning and one o'clock in the afternoon. That makes more sense about 1700 people. This is going to kill me to say because I'm on the board with the palace, with the palace, but I don't think it meets. Tourism's mission. That's just me. That's kind of. Mm -hmm. It's not bringing any hotel money. Mm -hmm. and so we're gonna probably limited sales tax. I, yeah, I don't think there's any sales. Now, to my knowledge, this is the first time historic downtown Gallup has applied for money for anything. The what? No, they also apply for third. Thursday. No, we have three. We have oh, three no, Thursday before Thursday this. Also. I've never seen any. We have one more. I don't think that we've ever applied yeah. for. Okay. Not on the movie series. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, we've got one more from downtown right. Gallatin. Right. Historic downtown Gallatin. That I think that was sponsored by State Farm. I thought this was sponsored by State Farm. I thought it was I So I this $5 fee, sponsor. because they're nonprofit, sure. they're not charging sales tax on this $5. No. Right. I don't exactly know how they're going to work I that out because there's so. no sales tax on the ticket sales. Correct. There's so. only sales tax on the concession. Okay. But, but they're free. But so there's no. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. how yeah. they would divide that up. Mm -hmm. I don't. Okay. I don't know what the value is for the concessions and what the value is for the tickets. I, what about, I like this. I just don't feel like it. What about five hundred dollars? Instead of a thousand. I mean, I guess it. There's a, not a material difference between five hundred and a thousand dollars. I understand. Say. And there is, um, I mean, our budget is going to be cut significantly. I think you have to really, really be careful on. Yeah. Well, and also I would, would like to point out 
uh, I know that Gillettsville does a, a free movie series. We do a free movie series. You are setting a precedent. Do we fund yeah. this? I think Portland's doing one too. Probably. Right. I mean, if either they, 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 do, they do. They do. They do the movies yeah. in the park. I, yeah, I think Hendersonville <laughs> may. So <laughs> e either the library, the chamber, the parks department. Usually, s someone in every community is doing something like this. Now, I, I mean, we fund it or not, but we are setting a precedence if we fund it for this, that every community in Sumner County could come back to us and then right. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. I agree. Fair. Uh, I'm going to motion to not approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll put a big friend on this one. Yeah. All right. Historic Downtown Gallatin is up again. Third Thursday on Main Outdoor Concert Series in Downtown Gallatin Square. This is a free event. Um, June, July, August, and September there will be events. Total projected budget is $13,000. They're requesting $1,000. Now this, depending on who's performing, could bring people from out of town. Well, according to this, they had 700, last year they only had 750 people attend, and 30 of them were from outside the local area. 30%. Which is, oh, 30 750? I, I can't imagine they had 750 over all four concerts. They may have had that for one. Not all four concerts, concerts. Like, no. Or five, yeah. Yeah, because. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, usually pretty good. Yeah, Chapel yeah. Heart was there, and they were packed. Mm -hmm. Who? Chapel Hearts. Oh, okay. And they and that was packed, so I can't. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think 750 is a very good estimate. If that's talking. I don't think um, so there either. There it is. He's a couple of things totally. that. Yeah, a couple of things for me on this one. Number one. Music is a pretty significant reason why people come to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a lack of. Um, Live. music events in Sumner County which puts tourism for music outside of what we would normally see in Tennessee so I think promoting events like this is probably important because that's in line with what we want to we want to see it brings a lot of business to the square yes. and Gallatin mm -hmm. um, restaurants and and, uh, and other businesses. Do the boutiques square. stay open late on that Thursday? Mm -hmm. It depends. Some, Some do. Okay. <laughs> Typically, they tend to really historically. Encourage more to <laughs> historically, <laughs> they, they, some have stayed lit open on Thursday afternoons, the evenings anyway. Okay. Well, I guess, yeah. And I'll add that we gave money to the Streets, Indi of, Indian Streets of Indian Lake, and I think we did that with a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So you can make the exactly same important. argument for this program. However, the, the people that are attending these are not looking for a good deal, like the moms with the small children. So mm -hmm. they're coming out, they have a drink or two. They're, they're going to support the economy mm -hmm. better. And then they also are going to travel a little ways. So you're, you're definitely maybe going to get people from outside of the county, Robertson, Davidson, things mm -hmm. like that, that are going to generate some revenue. So Yeah, here's another thing that I would say about this. The, to me, this is an opportunity where Sumner County Tourism, someone like Maddie could partner with Historic Downtown Gallatin to talk about how can we develop more activities like this that can that can continue to drive revenue or make them bigger. There was a concert last Sunday, 31st. There was rain all day long. The bluegrass. The bluegrass <laughs> thing. Uh, decoration day um the sun shone and within 30 minutes of the concert starting the square was packed and i was seeing some people who were complaining because there was no place to buy food or drink because restaurants weren't open on sunday Different nights because yeah. everybody yeah. everybody thought nobody would be there because of the rain yeah. they had food trucks planned and none of the food trucks showed up I mean, these people wanted to spend money and there was no place to spend money yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you'll have to talk to the event organizer next time. Oh, I did. Tell them to bring <laughs> I did, however. They said we had all that planned and uh, just nobody showed up. Yeah. yeah. This would, if you were to award them $1,000, 
$250 would come out of this year's budget, $750 would come out of next year's budget. I make a motion that we award them $1,000 as requested. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This would be one that would be perfect that, I mean, I get why it's done in the summertime. It's fine. But why not do it in May and October also, because the weather's still pretty nice then. I mean, that'd be... We, they have actually tried, and the, really? the attendance the wasn't so great because in yeah. May Ball. was... It falls that third Thursday falls right as the day before high school graduation. Yes. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. They've yeah. done some in October, and it actually yeah football season. Yeah. Yeah. Back in session, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't come. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was a, they were doing it on Fridays for a while, and it's, well, high school football would ruin yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was, like, I mean, it was awful. Yeah. Football in general. Yeah. Well, and a lot of it went to Thursdays on for I don't know if they're still doing because I'm not a football person. Middle school or but, or, or, JV. or JV. Yeah. Well, a lot of them started televising right. and on Thursday night. So yeah, yeah. Right. yeah I, I, right, it was at one point in October and there was just nobody there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's talk about American Bass Anglers Team Series. Um, this is the reason why we. I was gonna say, is there a reason they have submitted this so early? Is is this one that wow. could be tabled for the incoming director? Oh. I don't see April. April. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. It's next. It's on. It has to do with the tournament. Okay. Okay. Or, yeah. yeah, we voted. Yes, yeah. we approved it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Now, so with the, if you look at obligations of host community. It, it, Mm -hmm. Host community will pay the ABA $10,000 oh, y'all um, to host the boat docks that they, if this is on Old Hickory Lake, is this on Old Hickory Lake? Mm -hmm. Old yes. Hickory. Mm -hmm. Yes. The boat docks um, at Saunders are under construction. Ferry, right now. Mm -hmm. All summer. That may be why. Maybe they've had to postpone it, or I don't know. But a facility that can accommodate up to 250 boats, one facility? Is there one facility in this county they that can handle that? They launch at different times. They mm -hmm. stagger the launches. Stagger. Okay. Okay. That helps. <laughs> and it's um, a huge park. And it's in April. Yeah, so this one is a year from now, April 2025. And so their request from us is the host community obligation. Mm-hmm. Okay. My, my, that's a lot of commitment to someone who isn't here yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's going to be responsible for it, I think might be good to table that one just a well, little no 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 this is what they're no this is it okay look at this is all everything we're providing right a launch facility an indoor location and complimentary meals 300 people for 300 people oh well, that's catering five <laughs> yes, that is a catering five tent. double rooms complimentary or five nights for ABA staff members and provide a listing dollars. of hotels. Gosh, so the free thing we're doing is providing a listing of hotels. Have we provide ABA with an upload ready advertisement for web we advertising for your yeah. city or county and ten thousand dollars. Okay. So, you know really, so they're really asking for ten thousand dollars. I think they're right. I think they're right. I didn't right see anywhere where plus we, five so rooms where we had um, sponsored a team series championship. There are so many different tournaments, so people. it could be by another lane, just more. the same size. Yes. I know we did um, Midwest Crappie last year, and we did a dinner for three hundred people, and it was pizza. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but it says up to two hundred and fifty boats. That doesn't mean there's going to be two hundred and fifty boats. I think this is one of those that. Is going to require some more sure information and some negotiation. Mm -hmm. I also feel like um, that well, they've laid all of this out, but I feel like they're asking for people to like different communities to bid on it right now. Not that they're asking specifically for I, it to be held, you know, in Hendersonville, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, they could be going to Hermitage. Look, looking for a deal there, or not Juliet. Or I, I would dollars. say we probably need some more information on this, and maybe ask them if they would complete this sponsorship application. Yeah. Like yeah. This. Uh, so I'm in a motion that we send this back and request that they complete the application and provide us with some additional details. Do I have a second? Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
we've got time, so. That'll also give us a chance to research other things that we've funded like this in the past and see how it matters. Okay. Did we do pig fest? Yes. We did. Yep. All right, so we just have two that we sent, sent back. There's two that are deferred. Those are all the sponsorship <laughs> requests that we had. Is that correct? Uh -huh. I believe that is correct. All right, well, we've wrapped up the sponsorship request, then I will motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.